Hello and welcome to the Cache Virtual College Fair. This program is a panel on showcasing STEM in your application. We're really excited that you're here with us tonight and joining us um, for this program that's being hosted by the College Admissions Collaborative highlighting engineering and technology. We have a wonderful set of panelists tonight, like I said, for showcasing STEM in your application, and I'll be handing it over to them in just a moment. I wanna give you a few housekeeping announcements as we get started. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you, but you can ask questions using the Q&A button on your screen. So you can open that up and type your questions to our presenters at any time in the presentation, and they will be answering them today. This has been just one of many sessions that have been happening as part of Cache's programming. We hope you've enjoyed sessions earlier this week, and we still have a few sessions tonight for you to sign up as a part of the panels and info sessions. This presentation, like all the other presentations, is being recorded, and it's gonna be available at the same website where you register, strivescan.com slash cache. I'm now really excited to hand it over to Emily, who's going to be starting us off tonight and leading our panel. Thanks, Jennifer. Really appreciate it. Hello, everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're tuning in from. We really appreciate you taking time to learn more about what it's like to apply to institutions as a STEM applicant. I am joined this evening by colleagues from Columbia University, Drexel University, Harvey Mudd College, and Rice University. And here I am from Boston University, and we're going to um, take some time to tell you what we're going to cover this evening, and then we're going to give a little bit of an introduction to each of our institutions. So with that, we'll head over and take a peek at the agenda. We're going to introduce, we'll give a really high level overview of each of our institutions, but the bulk of what we're covering today is navigating the application process as a STEM applicant. We'll talk first about what types of STEM programs are out there from the traditional lab sciences to emerging fields like data science. We'll give some advice about what to consider in your college search about what types of programs might really excite you. Then we'll head into what we're looking for as college admissions professionals. How are you preparing yourself for the program to which you're applying? So what coursework might we wanna see? Then we'll talk about how to stand out in those kind of narrative parts of your application, like your activities section and your essays. And we'll conclude things with learning more about our institutions and about our communities on our campus. And then we'll leave plenty of time for questions. So please don't hesitate to enter your questions into the chat throughout the program. We will get to as many as we can. And with that, we'll kick things off by introducing our schools just a little bit more. So, as, as I said earlier, my name is Emily Lake. I'm an Associate Director of Admissions at Boston University. Boston University is a large private teaching and research university located right in the heart of Boston, Massachusetts, alongside the Charles River. We're one of the largest private institutions in the country with 16,000 undergraduate students and almost equal amount of graduate students. We're made up of 10 different undergraduate schools and colleges. And within those schools, a handful of them are focused specifically on STEM. The College of Arts and Sciences houses 70 liberal arts majors, many of which are in the lab sciences. We have an entire College of Engineering at BU, and we're most well known for biomedical engineering, although we do offer mechanical engineering, computer and electrical as well. We have a College of Health and Rehabilitation Sciences called the Sargent College, focused on pre-professional pathways in health sciences. And then we have a brand new program on campus called the Faculty of Computing and Data Sciences. In fact, we're, at, we're building a 13-story data science center right now, and this will be a really in, uh, interdisciplinary program focused on the emerging fields of data sciences. So an exciting place to be interested in STEM, a really vibrant city, that is innovative. There's a tremendous amount of startups and incredible ways to take your learning outside of the classroom through internships, through global programs, and through tremendous amounts of undergraduate research. And with that, I'm going to pass things over to Naomi from Columbia. Awesome, thank you so much, Emily. As Emily mentioned, my name is Naomi Varnas. I'm an assistant director at Columbia University. I use a pronoun she and her, and I'm excited to share just a little bit about Columbia. Um, as our name and our logo may imply, we are Columbia University, located in the city of New York. Um, and I'd like to mention that New York City uh, sits on Lenny Lenape and Wappinger land, and 
those people are still uh, members of our communities throughout New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania today. Um, when you think about Columbia, we are a large number of graduate schools, but primarily two undergraduate schools, and that's Columbia College and the Foo Foundation School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Now that's about 6,000 undergraduate students, and about half of our students of that 6,000 will study some one of the STEM fields. So some of that might be in Columbia College, where, where we have over 80 different majors, ranging from the arts, um, the humanities, as well as the natural sciences, the physical sciences, biological sciences, and then in our School of Engineering, <clears throat> where we have 10 departments um, and a number of different engineering specific majors, including a number of minors. Um, our students are really combining their interests in STEM with our commitment to a core curriculum, which is a now 100 year old commitment to discussion, debate, and really inquiry that takes your learning beyond the classroom. And because we are in New York City, the opportunities to explore the city, um, whether that's through internships, different research opportunities, not only at the Columbia schools, as well as the different research um, and other institutions in New York, but that's also about exploring your interests um, a little bit more broadly. So I think I'm going to, to wrap it up there and pass it on <clears throat> to my colleague from Drexel, Jill. Thank you, Naomi. My name is Jill Sweeney. I am an Associate Director of Admissions at Drexel University based in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Drexel University is a medium to large size university with about 14,500 undergraduate students from about 47 different states and 122 different countries. Um, we have over 80 majors and 100 minors um, staring across a variety of disciplines, but we do have a variety of STEM colleges and schools. We have our Antoinette Westfall College of Media Arts and Design, which houses majors like fashion design, architecture, animation, and visual effects. Our College of Arts and Sciences, which houses the natural sciences like biology, chemistry, and physics. Our College of Computing and Informatics, which houses our computer science program, as well as data science and information systems. Our College of Engineering, one of our oldest schools, um, which houses a variety of different types of engineering, you name it, we've likely got it. We have our College of Nursing and Health Professions, which houses our nursing major and our health sciences major, our Dornside School of Public Health, which houses our public health major, and then our School of Biomedical Engineering Science and Health Systems. One thing that Drexel is really known for is, is a focus on experiential hands-on learning. We think students learn best by doing, so we integrate practical real-world experience into the classroom. A really big part of that is our co-op program, which is over 100 years old, where students graduate with six to 18 months of full-time entry-level work experience in the industry before actually embarking on a career after graduation. So our students are graduating with a resume, professional network, and a clear idea of what they'd like to do for a career. With that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague from Harvey Mudd, Tyra Briggs. Great, thank you so much. Hi everyone, I'm Tyra Briggs and I'm the Vice President for Admission and Financial Aid at Harvey Mudd. Um, now for something quite different. <laughs> we are actually a small liberal arts college uh, we have 900 undergraduate students and we are located in Claremont, California, which is a small town about 35 miles to the east of Los Angeles in the heart of Southern California. Um, we also happen to be one of what are known as the Claremont Colleges. So along with Pomona, Scripps, Claremont McKenna and Pitzer Colleges, it means that once you're a student at any one of the colleges, you can take classes, eat your meals, join clubs at any of the others. And so even though we are only 900 undergraduate students, the entire consortium is actually about 6,000 undergraduate students. So it can take the best of the, the small world category and with the resources of a small to mid-sized university. Um, so we are a liberal arts college. You don't have to know what you wanna study coming in. You just have to be pretty certain that it's in the STEM field, uh, but you don't declare your major to the end of your sophomore year. We only have 10 majors and they are all in the STEM fields. I will just call out our engineering major because it's quite different. You don't major in mechanical engineering or civil engineering, you major in engineering. We do that very intentionally so that when you graduate, you can really go on in any aspect of engineering. We've taught you how to learn, how to think and how to problem solve. Um, tons of research opportunities, including our uh, world-renowned clinic program, which is where companies like Google, uh, Microsoft, Disney, SpaceX, they pay Harvey Mudd each year to have our students in groups of four or five take on real-life research problems for them. And that's the capstone project for our computer science and our engineers. Um, we have been rated as number one return on investment by payscale.com of any college or university in the country. Um, we work in an incredibly collaborative atmosphere. It's not a what'd you get, what'd you get kind of thing. Everything is uh, group work um, and an incredibly supportive environment really guided by our honor code. So with that, I will bring it home with Brandon. 
Thank you so much and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. My name is Brandon Mack. I uh, pronounce he, him, his. I'm an Associate Director of Admission and very proud alum of Rice University, located in the beautiful city of Houston, Texas. So Rice is what I like to call a comprehensive research university with a liberal arts attitude. So what I mean by that is that you get the very best of both worlds, the very best of a major research university, combined with the very best elements of a small liberal arts college. Um, we're known for academic freedom and flexibility and wanna give our students all the choices in terms of how they can structure their education. We have flexible distribution requirements rather than a core curriculum. So you decide what classes you wanna to take to satisfy your requirements. We offer over 50 majors and 23 different minors situated in seven different schools of study. And you see our schools listed there. Uh, we offer 11 different engineering majors. Um, we have over a 50 year history with NASA. So we have a long tradition when it comes to STEM education all located on a gorgeous 300 acre campus completely surrounded by trees in the beautiful city of Houston, Texas, home to Beyonce and yes, Rice's in formation. So with that, another thing to remember is that we definitely believe in happiness and balance, which is why we're consistently regarded as one of the, the happiest universities in the country and number one for best quality of life. And with that, we'll continue on with the program. You got a lot of great schools here. There are a lot of incredible schools represented here this evening, um, and there are a lot of different types of STEM programs to sift through and search from and search through and figure out which direction might be the best fit for you. So I want to walk through just a handful of different types of STEM majors and programs that might be of interest to you as you conduct your college search. Of course, maybe the most traditional in STEM are the lab sciences, your biology, physics, chemistry, neuroscience, environmental science, you know, neurobiology, the list goes on and on. There's a tremendous amount of range in the traditional lab sciences, all which often allow great hands-on work, lab work, um, research opportunities at all of our institutions are presented here this evening. There are also some emerging fields like technology and innovation programs. Many of our institutions have launched innovation centers, innovation majors and or minors, and have opportunities for you to launch new ventures if that's what you're hoping to do. We have support systems on some of our campuses to launch new social or new for-profit ventures, maybe small startups, for example, and innovation coursework and mentoring and other programs that will support you along that journey. So that might be something to look out for as you figure out which direction in STEM you're most excited about. Of course, the E in STEM is for engineering. Um, you've heard that there's a variety of different types of engineering programs, and some programs purely have engineering as an umbrella. But there are opportunities to get really granular in the engineering programs, like biomedical engineering, computer engineering, civil, electrical, mechanical. Actually, what's pictured on the screen right now is our BU students who are um, working in one of our tinker labs. So thinking about physical space, opportunities to really experience your education both in and out of the classroom if you're hoping to really get your hands dirty with your course material. Health science majors might be of interest to you. Um, those can range from physical therapy, um, athletic training, uh, lots of different types of programs that really will lead you to a specific degree program post-grad. So there are some programs that will lead you to master's degrees or doctoral programs. There is health sciences, behavior and health, human physiology, the list goes on. So if you're looking for you know, support and ways to prepare yourself for a career in various niche health sciences, those majors might be exciting to you. Another huge emerging field, unsurprisingly, is data science, computer science, and then we'll throw in math as well right here. Um, there are some really cool things happening across the country at the university and undergraduate level in data science and computer science, whether it be cybersecurity research, thinking about big data and how we use it, and thinking about the cross-section of social sciences and data sciences are really wonderful opportunities emerging and popping up throughout the country at universities and colleges, especially the ones listed here tonight. 
Um, and then the last two things I'll point out are opportunities for accelerated programs. Some schools will allow students to tack on a, maybe a year of a master's program or even an accelerated seven-year medical program. So for those of you who know exactly what you want to do and are hoping to move on to an advanced degree after your undergraduate programs, accelerated programs might be worth looking into. And finally, um, looking for advising opportunities, pre-professional support services. Um, many of our schools don't have them as majors, but rather as advising systems. So these are all things to consider as you're putting together your college search list, and as you're thinking about what kind of academic environment you wanna to move towards and what major you're most excited about. But there's lots of other things to consider as part of your college search. So I'm gonna turn things over to Jill so she can talk about that. Thank you, Emily. So as Emily mentioned, there are things you can do outside of academics and ways you can really explore STEM at a college or university outside of the classroom. Um, so for example, there's research programs. Reachers is a great way to challenge yourself, hone your problem solving skills and prepare for graduate school or a professional degree. Um, you can see pictured there to Drexel students who are actually doing research for um, work experience at Crayola. So they're developing new products um, and colors for the uh, crown company. When you're looking at schools, you want to consider whether that school provides opportunities and funding for undergraduate research, if that's something you're really interested in pursuing. There's also internships and co-op programs. They're both a great way to gain work experience and apply your classroom learning to the real world. The lines between the two can be a bit blurry, but typically internships tend to be short-term, unpaid, and part-time, while co-ops tend to be long-term, paid, and full-time. You'll want to see if your school supports either kind of program, has partnerships to help you find an internship or co-op, if there's a career center that will connect you with employers for an internship or co-op uh, experience, and if there's an opportunity for it really to be built into your curriculum and experience at college. Clubs and student organizations are a great way to connect with other students who share your passions, future goals, or your identity. For example, there are organizations like the Women in Computing Society, the National Society of Black Engineers, and Formula SAE where students from all backgrounds work together, design, build, and race a Formula SAE car. You'll wanna look online at the schools you're considering to see what kinds of organizations I have in support. Um, that's something I definitely recommend looking on the school's website, just because a lot of co uh, colleges have hundreds and hundreds of school clubs. So typically the admissions representative isn't gonna have them all memorized, but that way you can explore what's on the website. You'll also wanna see, can I start my own club or organization at that school? So if it doesn't exist, can I get something started? On top of that, study abroad. Studying abroad is a, allows you to challenge your worldviews and immerse yourself in another culture. And there are some schools that actually have study abroad programs with a STEM focus. Um, an example of that is at Drexel, students can study abroad in Bioko Island where they take classes at a local university, but also conduct individual research projects at a local wildlife center. You'll wanna ask if you're interested in study abroad, ask colleges what kind of abroad programs they have, if STEM programs can study, STEM students can study abroad, because sometimes it can be challenging to study abroad for certain STEM programs. So you'll want to make sure that's an opportunity. And you'll want to also ask, do they have any study abroad programs with a STEM focus? And then finally, summer programs. They can be organized through colleges as well as private companies and businesses. They can be tied to research, work experience, or study abroad. So they might be related to any of the things I previously mentioned, but they're a way for you to gain experience in your field, build up your resume and learn outside of the classroom and maybe connect even with a company or organization you might be interested in doing research for or working for one day. And I should note that some of these opportunities are available to high school students too. So if you're interested in exploring STEM as a high school student, ask your, call, your high school counselor and see if there's any opportunities they know of to really explore STEM before you go to college. But with that, I'm going to turn it over to what is required with the college search process. Great, thank you. So everybody's favorite topic, what do I have to do? Um, first and foremost, this probably is common sense, but the main thing you need to do is fulfill your high school graduation requirements. That's gonna be key, because in order to get to any of us, you gotta go through that first. Um, we also know that many of you don't have control over all of the courses you're gonna take, and perhaps especially not in the early years. So know that I'm gonna give you sort of some guidelines and some suggestions, but we know that in some cases, you're not gonna have a whole lot of, a whole lot of say in this. Um, so yeah, we're gonna start with math and science, probably not surprising at all, since that's we're talking about STEM. Um, and there are, you'll see at the bottom of this slide and actually the bottom of the last slide, the next slide, it'll say it will depend, check with each college. And I think as you go through the college admission process, it will be frustrating how often we will say this, but it is absolutely Absolutely true. Um, 
what you're going to need to pay attention to is are you on a track to get into whatever the highest level math that your colleges are going to require. For some schools, that is going to be calculus. It's a very common requirement for different STEM programs and certainly engineering programs, although there's some leeway there with some institutions, but just pay attention that you're on a path to be able to do that. Um, and also physics is often required as well. So pay attention to what the required courses are and spend some time on your college's websites. Um, for science, um, you're going to see, again, biology, chemistry, and physics are all very, very common um, courses that you're going to be taking in high school. Um, so we know that those are the ones you're going to be paying attention to. Um, the other thing I'm going to recommend, though, is pay attention to things like some of you have been in integrated science courses, which seems to be something that's catching on more and more. You should reach out to the different colleges to make sure that integrated sciences will fulfill some of the requirements that they have or how they are viewed, because, again, you, make it, you might get different answers from all of us. Um, so, yes, it will depend. Check with each college. You can go to the next slide. So here's the next part though. What I don't want you to do is forget the rest of this part. So English, social studies, foreign language, arts. I think people always wonder why do you care about that if I really want to be a STEM major? And there's a couple sort of philosophical reasons and some really hands-on. The main philosophical region reason is that we know you're going to be a better mathematician, a better scientist, a better engineer by having not just a glancing exposure to non-STEM uh, courses, but actually paying real attention and sort of digging in deep. Um, we know that we're, you're gonna learn some incredibly essential skills through taking all of these courses, um, critical thinking, writing, understanding context in these courses, become a better problem solver. And what I don't want you to lose sight of is these subjects on their own, completely unrelated to STEM, are really cool. So stay focused on them as well. Um, and please know that when we talk about how well our students do after they graduate, it's not just because they're coming out of our college doing strong, our university doing strong, strong STEM work. It is also because they have all of these other skills. Again, this ability to problem solve, to collaborate, to communicate that actually make them more desirable than students who are just coming out with a straight STEM degree. So pay attention and check with each college. Make sure that you're, you're getting in what's going to be required. Talk to your counselor. Um, if you are in a situation where you have gone past what your school has offered by taking courses at local colleges, universities, or online, um, just make sure, find again, find out from each college how they want you to report that. Usually it can be self-reported and then get an official transcript later, but just make sure that it shows up somewhere on your application so we're aware of the level that you reached in each of your subjects. And with that, I will turn it on so we can turn, turn it over so we can hear about how you can stand out. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tyra. Um, <clears throat> so we've heard a little bit about what's required. And I think the next question is, how do I stand out as a student who is interested in STEM? And I think the, the central question that we're thinking about as we're looking at your entire application, trying to understand who you are as a student, um, how you prepared yourself academically with your coursework, and then really how you've started to explore, we're going to really wonder how you've explored your interests. And that can come through in a lot of different places. But I want to think about it a little bit in terms of what are you doing, what are you saying, and what are others saying about you. So first to think about what you're doing, some of the places where we can see that you are taking on opportunities, exploring, really can first come from some of the things that Tyra just mentioned, the coursework that you're taking. So are you taking on rigorous coursework in your school, or if those courses aren't necessarily offered in your school, are you maybe taking example, um, taking advantage of uh, course, course X classes, or courses in a community college, or you're maybe exploring books from your local library or watching YouTube videos online, how are you exploring the ideas um, that you're excited about? And then are you, how are you performing? So we want to see that you're taking on preparation, you're taking on challenge, that you're also succeeding in those challenges. The other element is your extracurricular. So that can really range from a number of different things, but are you exploring STEM extracurricularly through a club or an organization? Maybe it's through an internship that you've had the opportunity to do, or maybe you're working and you're seeing how your job is providing you with a frame of reference for the kind of thing that you are interested in doing when it comes to your academics or when it comes to who you want to be in a STEM community on a college campus. So again, what you're doing can be a really flexible, but really um, <clears throat> informative way of demonstrating how you've explored your interests in STEM and your interests more broadly. Another place that I know is very critical, especially as you sit down to write your application, is really thinking about what you're saying. So not only, there are a few different places in your application where you communicate directly to those of us who are reading them. Uh, that might be a personal statement where you're sharing the way that you approach questions um, and your curiosity. And that can be a really helpful way for us to think about how you may explore as a STEM student. 
Another place that can be incredibly helpful is supplemental questions. Um, for example, at Columbia, one of our supplemental questions does ask you about how you came to your academic interests. And that can be a really excellent place to display a little bit of what you're doing and then how you're thinking about the places that you mentioned your academic interests. It also might be sharing how you've been part of a community or a way that you've um, approached a, a question or a problem. And those are helpful places for you to think a little bit outside of the box in some ways about how you want to display your strengths as a student, especially as a student interested in STEM. The other place that I want to ask everyone to consider is really what others are saying about you. And this is not gossip. This is a way to really show your strengths. Um, first off with letters of recommendation um, to some of the other points where it can depend with each college. One of the things to consider is what letters of recommendation are schools asking for. Um, for example, at Columbia's engineering school, we ask that one of your rec letters of recommendation come from a math or a science teacher. So first off, you want to make sure that you are fulfilling the asks of an individual school, but you're also going to teachers um, <clears throat> who are able to speak to your strengths, who, who know you and how you appro approach learning, how you contribute to a learning environment, and really how you again approach problems and succeed, hopefully. Um, I know that there are a lot of questions that come up with, with when to ask for a teacher, especially as learning may have changed, but definitely think about the relationships that you have that really speak to you, who you are as a student now. And again, that might depend on each individual school. Last, a last place that I'll quickly mention when it comes to, again, what are others saying about you and, and your engagement as a high school student um, is awards or other recognition that you might have. That might be an award within your individual class or within your school or within your region or more broadly, a national award or an international award. Those are really helpful things for you to share with us. And you have a space, you have space on your application, whether you're using the common application, the coalition application, a variety of other applications to share the ways that you've been recognized. Um, sometimes that might not be a formal award, but it could be a local honor, um, or that you've had something published or something recognized. So think about how others may be able to, to speak to you or reflect the way that you've been able to explore or to contribute. Because at the end of the day, all of this is really flexible and it's really based on the opportunities that you've had available to you. But I hope that you're thinking about your application as an opportunity to put together all of those different pieces, um, what you're doing, what you're saying, what others are saying, to really display your, your interests and your many successes as a high school student. Uh, with that, I'm going to pass it on to Brandon to round us out before we get to a Q&A. Thank you so much. And um, as I mentioned at the beginning, there are a lot of amazing institutions here present, but just overall that offer great STEM programs. So one of the things that you can do is learn more about us and what makes us unique and could be a great fit for the type of education that you want out of your college experience. So the photo that you see here is of our Oshman Engineering Design Kitchen at Rice University. And it's a space where students can design and create their own unique engineering projects. So in a sense, it's where you can do more. And so in a sense, this same list is one of the things that you and your family can do to learn more about our institutions. So you can contact the Office of Admission with your questions. We'll definitely be the central place you'll wanna to go to with respect to anything specific to the admission process, because often we're the ones who are handling the admission process for our institutions rather than the actual departments and professors themselves. Uh, if you're interested in particular departments, you may wanna contact those professors that you're interested in, ask them about their research, ask them about the programs that are within their particular departments, ask them about their specialties, because they'll definitely be excited to hear from you because they're excited to see that you're excited about what they're doing. We definitely encourage you to participate in both our on-campus events and our virtual offerings. Many of our institutions are back to welcoming students onto our campuses, and we would love to see you, but you will definitely want to go to our admission offices to see what our, off our offerings are and schedule through there. If you don't have the ability to be able to come to our campuses, the virtual offerings are also a great way of learning more about our institutions. You can talk to current students who are that mechanical engineering major or that astronomy major and learn more about what their experiences are, and you don't even have to leave your home in order to do that. But also, as Jill mentioned during her presentation, reach out to those student engineering groups because that will be another great way of connecting with a student who is similar to you and ask them, what is it like to be a STEM student 
at your particular school. So that could be the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. That could be National Society of Black Engineers or NSBE or the Society of Women Engineers and many, many more. So you wanna utilize all those resources to really get a sense of what is it like to be a STEM student at that school because it's definitely gonna help you in the application process because every single one of us is gonna ask you, why Rice, why Harvey Mudd, why Columbia, why Drexel, why Boston University? And the way you can also help to make yourself stand out is by writing an excellent statement that really utilizes all these opportunities that you took to learn more about us and demonstrating why you feel our institution is where you want your STEM education to be. With that, we'll open up the floor to any questions that you have. And plus, you can uh, just to remind everyone, you can submit uh, any questions you have through the Q&A function uh, through Zoom, and we definitely welcome any questions you may have for all of us or even for specific institutions. Awesome. Thank you, Brandon, for wrapping us up. Um, I have a kind of general question to pose to the group, um, especially as we've talked a lot about engineering specific majors, as well as laboratories, and a number of us have a number of schools. Um, <clears throat> are there any recommendations you have to students as they're thinking about how they want to tailor their application for an engineering curriculum versus uh, a liberal, more liberal arts uh, curriculum? I'll try that one. I mean, I think, you know, for, because we, again, we are a liberal arts college, a third of your curriculum at Harvey Mudd um, is in the humanities, social sciences, and the arts. And I think my, my one piece of advice would be, don't be scared to talk about non-STEM things too. Um, we know that you are a, a well-rounded human being, even if you may have a passion in the STEM fields. So please take advantage of, you know, don't feel like you haven't done this research opportunity or you haven't had the opportunity to do all STEM activities that we're going to be as excited about what you're doing outside of the STEM fields as you are, as we are about seeing what you're doing inside the STEM fields. Yeah, to Tyra's point, we know that you're passionate about a lot of different things. Um, at Drexel, like a third of the students in our choir are engineering students. Um, so don't hesitate to highlight those things that get you really excited because we know that at college you might have your academic focus, but you still might want to join the choir or theater or play a sport. We want to see that you're excited about these things. So don't, you know, if you're super jazzed about theater or soccer, tell us that because that excitement really shines through in the application. Yeah, what I, uh, sorry, Emily, uh, what I would add is definitely make sure you're putting that time and attention to every single element of the application. It really is giving us a sense of all of who you're, of what you're bringing uh, to the table. So if you're really super jazzed about engineering, really demonstrate that engagement that you have had with engineering. But at the same time, we're going to care about all the other parts of you because when you go to any college or university, you are bringing all of yourself. So really make sure that you focus on every single part and really demonstrate what is it that you're bringing to the table. I, I agree with everything that you've all said. I think if you are a student with multiple interests, and we're all multidimensional and we all have different interests. So please lean into your love for the arts or your obscure interest in like Japanese calligraphy or whatever uniqueness you have. But also, if you have been purely committed to STEM or you run with one thing, that too is okay. I think there's a myth that we all need well-rounded students. And we do have well-rounded students on our campuses, but we're building well-rounded classes. We're not necessarily seeking students who are have you know 47 interests. It's okay if you have a really unique niche that you are or niche that you're following. So if most of your activities have been in robotics and in pre-med stuff, that is completely okay. Know that we have room for people on our campuses who are single track and room for people on our campuses with a multitude of interests. So I just wanna echo that you can, you know, yes, it's great to have multiple interests, but it's also okay if you've been really dedicated to just a couple of things. Oh, go ahead, Brandon, if you were, I don't yeah, to I like to say I like to say that we're creating symphonies when we're making up our class. And so we need all those different sounds. Right. So some are going to be very pointed and direct. Some are going to be more uh, broadband. So hence we need it all. And given how many uh, STEM students are really strong musicians, we can create literal symphonies, too. 
I love that. Jill, did you want to, did you have something to share? Yeah, I was just going to say too, kind of to what Emily was saying. I definitely also, I think a lot of us have a tendency to be modest. Um, We don't like to highlight how wonderful we are. Now is the one time not to be modest. Um, Like Emily said, if you have been like captain of the robotics team, you have done all this amazing work in robotics or in your captain of the soccer team and your first chair in the symphony, tell us that. Don't just say, I play soccer, I do robotics. Tell us how wonderful and amazing you are. Um, don't be shy. Don't be afraid to, to brag about yourself. I always like to tell students, think of it like you're, be- you're writing about your best friend or how your best friend would write about you um, because you really want to shine through all the amazing accomplishments that you've had. I think that's a really, I love write about yourself like your best friend might, or like you would about your best friend. Um, we actually have a, a great question about um, submitting additional information. This question specifically is about submitting abstracts of science fair projects with applications, but I think that opens a really good question for um, how to treat any kind of additional materials that might display particular engagement. Um, does anybody want to get into that one? Yeah, I can kick things off. Um, This is when the quintessential answer of all college admissions panels comes into play. And the answer is it depends. So um, you are welcome to share additional information in a couple of different ways. So on the common application and on the coalition application, which many of our institutions use, and uh, many of us, if not all of us are common application schools, there is a section called the additional information section. So if you really want to highlight a specific thing that you think needs extra explanation, that could be a good place to do that. Or maybe that section, you don't have to use it, but if you want to, it's also a good place to explain anything that might be an anomaly in your transcript, for example. But if you have a science fair project or a research project that you want to talk about, that could be a place to do it. Some of our institutions have opportunities to upload additional information on our member pages, or you can email them to us and we can add them to your application. I would just be mindful of length. We are all receiving lots of applications and we want to do justice to everything we receive and open all parts of the application. But at a place like BU where we see about 76,000 applications, please do not send us a 15 page abstract because that is a lot of paper to sift through or a lot of information to read. So do you know sh- sh- allow your um, activities to shine, share a brief summary of what you've done and what the impact was or what your what you did for this project or research. Um, But I would try to do that in a pithy way to be brief because uh, quality is more important than content and length. (laughs) The only thing I would add is also don't assume that the person reading your application has a STEM background. (laughs) So I mentioned the importance of communication. We all hit on that, we're all raising our hands. Um, We, you know, we hit on the importance of communication Talking to us um, in a way that you're going to help us understand it is going to get us to get really excited about it as well. And something else you can do too is if you've done research um, or had a work experience related to STEM, you could also ask the person who supervised you to write you a letter of recommendation. Um, they, a lot of schools will, I mean, Drexel and a lot of other schools will accept a letter of recommendation, an extra letter of recommendation from someone outside of the school. They'll just usually need to send it to us directly, but that's also another way to highlight your contribution too. I think you, highlighting contributions, being able to shine. Um, there's a question that I've got that we got in the Q and A about um, what if you haven't been the leader of a team or a club um, and you've been involved but are a little bit more of an introvert? Is there a way to to let that experience shine? And Brandon, you look excited, so I'm going to pass it to you first. I am because we, like I said, we're creating that symphony. So we need all different types. We need extroverts, we need introverts, everything in between. There are so many different ways that you can leverage your love of things in the application. So when we look at your extracurriculars, we're not just looking for buzzwords. We can tell by the way that you describe your involvements that you really love what you do. And so that's why you shouldn't necessarily worry about the title. We want to see what is it that you've done. So trust me, if you've been super involved, we're going to see it by the number of hours that you put into that, into the extracurricular. We're going to look at the things that you describe with how your involvement is and 
why you love it. And then you can also use your essays. What I always tell students to do is to take a 10,000 square foot view of their application, look at everything and say, what is important to me that is not being said? That thing that's not being said is probably gonna be a really great essay topic. So if you don't feel that that love of physics or that love of robotics or that love of sharks and the way you connect to sharks is not being said, probably gonna be a great thing for your essay. And then we're gonna be able to feel that love for it. So trust me, you can utilize your application to really demonstrate your involvement outside of titles, outside of awards and all that. And we're gonna be interested because we see the interest that you presented. I would just add that um, there are ways to talk about your involvement as a team member that can be really impactful in the application process. STEM field requires a tremendous amount of collaboration and teamwork. So we're often looking for how you are on a team, even if you're not the leader of that team or project. So think about the impact um, your club has had on you and the impact you've had on that team, even if it hasn't been as a leader. So, you know, do you make new people feel comfortable? Are you the one who is always sticking around after to make sure the first year students are excited about the work and have their questions answered? I mean, there are just so, so many ways to make, to, to sing your own praises. And that's where um, humility is a wonderful thing that we should all hold on to. But in the application process, that's where going back to Jill, it's okay to brag a little, it's okay to be proud of yourself um, because ultimately we're trying to figure out what kind of community member you're gonna be. So talk about what kind of community member you are. Amazing. I think that's a really helpful framework for, for approaching that. I am going to, to put out a final call for any questions in the Q&A function. I'll give it maybe another 15, 30 seconds, but otherwise I do wanna thank everybody for their time this afternoon and for all of your really good, good questions. Um, I think that we've managed to hit a number of different topics that will hopefully be helpful to all of you. And if now there aren't any more questions, I think we can, can wrap, oh wait, actually, thank you so much this last one. And this is a really helpful question. Uh, due to COVID what's and what's currently going on in the world, a lot of extracurriculars have been canceled. Um, how do we think that will affect how we approach college applications, especially since there were fewer opportunities? And I can take, I can take this one or start us off. Um, so I tell students, I know, like, first off, everyone in this room is aware of what's going on the past year. We all know that it has changed everything. Um, so we are very understanding. We give students a lot of grace and understanding. So we know that it's been a challenging year. What I tell students with the extracurriculars, and I've always said this, is think more creatively. Extracurriculars, of course, includes things you do at school. It includes clubs, sports, organizations, but it also includes part-time jobs, significant family responsibilities, hobbies, volunteer work, things you do outside of the school. I define um, activities as anything that takes up a significant amount of your time outside of the classroom. Maybe for example, during the past year, your parents were both essential workers. So you were helping your younger sibling do virtual learning. You were giving them dinner, lunch, giving them a bath, putting them to bed because your parents worked until 11 o'clock at night. Maybe you took up a hobby. Maybe you were sewing masks for a hospital workers, or maybe you were doing research on your own. Maybe you were learning a new language. You can, of course, highlight those things during your application. So always think creatively about those extracurriculars. You can, of course, highlight things that you would have done. So maybe in spring 2020, you were going to be the lead of the school musical, but the musical was canceled. You can still put down on there that you were going, because you still went to rehearsals and everything. You can still, of course, put down, you know, I was going to be the lead in our school's production of Hairspray, um, but the production was canceled uh, due to COVID. So you can think, uh, just hammering home, think creatively about those extracurriculars activity and highlight those things that you do in school and outside of school. I'm so glad that was a great question. And I'm so glad I really, when I saw that, wanted to make sure we were gonna answer it for everybody. So, um, well, now we have reached the end of our time together. And I just wanna say thank you to our panelists. This has been fantastic. I wish I had this kind of session when I was a STEM major or thinking about being becoming a STEM major many, many years ago, my college search. So I hope for everyone who's watched 
this either live or on the recording. I just know you've gotten some great information um, about the schools, but that you can, these individual schools, but also you can apply in so many other ways in your college search journey as well. Um, thank you, panelists. You've been absolutely fantastic today. Um, all right, so now the housekeeping part of wrapping up. So when you close your screen, there's going to be a very quick five question survey. We appreciate the feedback that you can provide. Um, and I promise, students especially, it's very quick and fast. I promise that. Um, we hope that you'll sign up for more sessions and the panels and information sessions that are part of the Cache programming. Um, you can do that at the same website where you signed up for this panel today as well. And remember that this session, like all sessions, has been recorded and you'll be able to find that at that same website where you registered. Um, and that is on the screen, strivescan.com slash C-A-C-H-E-T. So again, thank you so much everyone for spending your time with us today um, and best of luck in your college search and decision journey and all throughout this school year. Good night, everyone.